Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, Julia Montgomery, who you all know as Betty in Revenge of the Nerds. I'm having her back on the show today to have a chat. Uh, it's been over a year and a half now, and uh, if you follow this show and you know about the first four t- four times before the last one, you know, she was on, you know, quite frequently um, of, the, of the previous four before last. This is going to be the sixth time she's been on the show, but uh, she's been awfully busy, and heck, I've been awfully busy doing this podcast, and I'm having her back on to have a random chat, and make her laugh. I love the sound of Julia's laugh, and she's an awesome lady. She is a gem. And, uh, yeah, nothing much more to it than that. So here is my new interview with Julia Montgomery. Hello. What's up, Julia? (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing? Oh, nothing much. Are you driving? I'm actually not driving, do I sound like I am? No. For one. Well, maybe twice before. Oh, you're right. Maybe twice. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's been way too long since the last time. How how are you holding up in this um, clusterfuck known as pandemic? Casting like crazy. Yeah, it's a great time to get people. Yeah, oh my God, I gotta tell you, uh, my podcast is starting to get word of mouth, and I'm getting, Beautiful. I'm getting people recommend, recommending me to interview their friends and colleagues in the business. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I have a lot more confidence now to ask people to help me get certain guests now, and I'd never had that before. <laughs> you know. And yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, 
the other day, after three years, I finally got Corinne, and she was wonderful. Oh, she's so much fun. Yeah. That girl is, she is so much fun. Yeah. So is that one on, is that one ready for us to hear then? Oh, yes. Go ahead and listen. It's it's, it's great. You know, she, it's funny. She's so, um, she's very modest and self-deprecating, and she kept apologizing for not remembering stuff, you know? <laughs> I was just like... It's okay, you know, I got information to, to jaw your memory and stuff. <laughs> That's what's so fun. It's like, you do. You have all this information. It's like, oh, my God, you remember that? Oh, I forgot all the thing or whatever. Whatever. So that's cool. Yeah, she and I, we did steward of school together. That's, yep. I guess, where we met way back. Way back in the late 80s, mid 80s. Yeah, around 86. Yeah, yeah. And then... um Several years later, yeah, we used to do bike rides together on that, just like, you know, fun, like, bike, beach bike riding back in Dennis, the, the time of jewelry school. Yeah. And then, uh, then uh, many years went by, and then, uh, you know, when I did Revenge of the Nerds, I guess, four, yep. was cast and, I, and was wonderful across from Curtis in that love story. I don't know if you ever saw four, but that, yep. I thought four was really cute, actually. I, you know, one was, of course, the best, but, but four was really cute, and I love their storyline together. So, um, she's yeah. so talented. Oh, she is, yes. And, yeah. yeah, I remember when four first aired, and you had to wear 3D glasses from 7-Eleven. Oh, my God, I forgot that part. That's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Oh, my God. Back in November, I interviewed KT Vo, who played Edith in part three. Oh my gosh! Wow, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, she was ve- she was very bitter and very weird with me. <laughs> oh, she was. She was bitter and horrible. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something. Oregon is the place actors go to die because I've interviewed two of them. Um, they both were the same. You know, in terms of they were just negative and bitter about how um, Hollywood treated them. So now they're in Oregon doing the Shakespeare Festival and the the theaters right. out there and stuff. You know, it's it's really sad. You know, I mean, most actors are bitter, but th- this was just uncomfortable. They were just uncomfortably negative. You know, especially her, and it was sad. Oh, you know? that's that's so disappointing. Now I'm trying to remember who she. I don't remember just upon her name. Tell me exactly who she played and what. Her name was Edith. She was a heavy set girl in the, the new generation of Tri Lambdas. And she was really, really funny. And she was really heavy back then. She actually lost weight about two years later or so. And now she's wow. back. She's back to being heavy again now that she's got, you know, a kid and, and a husband and what have you. But. Yeah, it was pretty sad, and you know, and she told me uh, she would like to come back on because uh, she had to go, and uh, I couldn't tell her my accident story, and then she was just, you know, humoring me and and everything, and we had a little bit of a um, a LinkedIn war because uh, she's on LinkedIn. That's the only social media she's on. Uh, a couple of months ago, you know, but whatever, you know, it happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's sad. Well, I'm sorry for that, yeah. It's okay. Uh, guess, guess who's coming on tomorrow? Who? Sandy Helberg. Oh, Sandy. I run into him sometimes, or I used to run into him and, and um, Harriet often in the Malibu um, Country Mart up at Cross Creek in Malibu. We would just, usually somewhere right around the coffee bean, we would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally to each other and uh, you know I'm friends with them on Facebook and then uh, I took my daughter to see one of Sandy's comedy comedy uh, routines a couple years ago that was really funny yeah uh, so that's fun yeah I'm, I'm... Never, I'm never connected with um, Jeff East I know he every once in a while I'll see him like on the Comic Con circuit or something like that who? Jeffrey East he was in up the Creek. Um, I don't know all of it. Honestly, I don't know all of his credits. He was in, you know, the, uh, that the really bad college comedy that I did. Um, had a good cast with Tim Aston. Actually, Corinne yep. 
was dating Kim Matheson during Up the Creek. Um, oh! Back in those days. I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> I, I, and I, don't, I didn't know her yet. I, don't, I didn't know her yet. So we hadn't really met. I just remember the girlfriend coming to the set or to the, to the, uh, we shot in Oregon, speaking of Oregon, at the Deschutes River, and it was a, it was like being at camp. It was crazy. That shoot was crazy. There were like three <laughs> girls. I was one of them. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, like just 15 guys, you know, it was a crazy, it was a really bad movie. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I like the movie though. Oh, that's so funny. You like the movie. You know the movie. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 and I'm friends with a couple of the founding members of the Groundlings um, who have been praising who have been praising to me about Sandy the last few years, and I just uh, decided now, uh, okay, I'll I'll reach out to him and stuff. I remember him from Up the Creek and Spaceballs and so many great movies. And plus, I like his son yeah. Simon, who's on The Big Bang Theory. Sure, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And and what did you? Who did you know? You you knew or you have spoken to ever yet Bryn my girlfriend Bryn Thayer uh, yeah I wanted to bring that up to you so I listened to the interview you did on Greg's show the the week before we were at Granville last year well, okay I and, don't remember uh, what I said or anything <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I have no idea um, yeah go ahead yeah I, I finally heard the interview because he waits like a year to post it and um, you mentioned in the interview that you're friends with Bryn Th- Thayer. And I was like, oh, shit, I've been wanting to get in contact with her for a long time because I just interviewed the the, the, the guy who played her, her son in the movie Big Shots. And he told me he loved her so much, he wished that, 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 that she was his real mom. She's just amazing. I mean, we, we're best friends from way back on One Life to Live. Yeah. Went over the beginning of our, basically, the beginnings of our careers, other than commercials and stuff. She's a soap actress, so like, yeah. Yeah, we go back far. And um, so you did interview, was it, was it, the, what was, was her son that you were trying to find through her, ultimately, and you already found him? Is that what you no, 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 remember? No, no, no. Oh, no, no, I interviewed the guy who played her son in that movie. And okay. I, I wasn't interviewing him hoping that I would be able to get her or anything. It was just because I love that movie and I wanted to interview him because that was literally the only movie he ever made, you know. And, hey. and he had mentioned uh, he had mentioned that about Brennan and everything, you know. And then when I heard you bring it up, I was like, hmm, maybe Julia could make it happen. Well, I'll, I'll definitely put it out there to her um, and see if she'll, uh, you know, how, how do you want her to connect? Like what? Um, you know, you can give her my cell if she's got a cell. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And um, what's the what's the easiest way for her to hear everything? Uh, whatever. Um, my <laughs> my YouTube channel is Tommy Kovac, and okay. uh, it's a profile picture of me and Robert England. Perfect. Yeah. And um, okay. last October, uh, we got a cat. Oh. And <laughs> she, she is so adorable. And she's got personality like you couldn't believe. Oh, I love cats. She, yeah, she meows like, like she's talking. And she is so strong, she can open my bedroom door, climb onto my bed, and look through the, the window shades. I, I took a picture oh. of it the other night. <laughs> oh my gosh! Her. I grew up with cats. I love cats. Love cats. Yeah. yeah. Her, her name is Cinnamon. We call her Ho Bag sometimes. Ho Bag. Ho Bag. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's always laying on her back, looking sexy like she's a model. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Uh, Um, that's she, so cute. And um, let's see, who who um, are you? Are you living with your mom or what? Yeah, my mom is is uh, doing great. Um, 
uh, she's having her second shoulder surgery next week and she had to wait a year to do it. And, um, it's, you know, it's been very painful for her, the whole process after she got injured last year when we got back from our trip, you know, but she's getting through and my brother just got out of rehab. Um, uh, he's, 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 he's having trouble, but he's staying very optimistic and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Well, I hope, hope that works, works out well for him. I mean, you say he's having issues with staying, staying clean, or, or what? Just have have it. Just having um, you know, his attitude in check. You know, he's just been okay. very cranky. You know, and he's trying to get used to the, uh-huh. to all of this. You know, withdraws basically. Yeah, that's got to be really hard. Yeah. No. I um. Oh. I had my physical last uh, Christmas time, and my blood sugar was really high, and so I went on a diet starting January 1st, and um, I lost 24 pounds, and then, Hi. yeah, and then quarantine started, and so our gym here in the apartment has been closed, and so I'm waiting for it to open up again. They said it's going to open up, you know, I think by June 1st or something like that. So I've been, I've been eating a lot of junk and I, I haven't gotten exercise, but I did lose that 24 and I've sustained it. I haven't gained any weight. Oh, I'm very impressed. That's so hard right now. Yeah. That really is in this, what we're going through. I mean, I just, just having to be home so much, you know, Yeah. <laughs> it's just so hard. I mean, it's, one of the things that, that, that we all look forward to regardless, right? I mean, it's just, um, you know, eating. And, and if you can't, you know, we don't have all of our all of our things to do. It's just so difficult. I know. And our, and our L.A. trip this year went down the tubes, you know, because um, we were going to be out there for a week again, like last year, and we were going to go to both Monster Palooza and the Hollywood show because they were in the same week for the first time ever. And then they both got canceled. And now the Hollywood show is um, they're going to try to open it in August, you know, if all this can can, you know, calm down and stuff. And um, they right. they got a lot of the same people booked and everything and some new people, um, you know, including the cast of Grease, you know, which we were excited to go meet and stuff. So. Hopefully, oh, wow. hopefully it'll happen, you know. Yeah, exactly. I sure, I know all of that stuff that we, we're all kind of just messed us out all up with, with our careers and that, that way everything has just been out of standstill. Mm-hmm. These little, you know, but, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there, some things are just kind of starting, starting up, but. It's not, not, nothing's really there yet. Yeah, I think that uh, this has been very humbling, um, you know, because ever since 9-11 happened, everyone's been very selfish and greedy and mean-spirited, and I think this has kind of given everyone a sense of reality. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But then, of course, there's a lot of people who are still entitled and not wearing their mask uh, when they go out, and, you know... There, there have been a couple of times when I've forgotten to bring my mask, you know, only because I forgot, you know, and right. I did, I was very sick for a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago, and I got tested for COVID and I was negative, thank God, but oh. it was pretty bad. I mean, I, I was for damn sure that I had it. Oh, man. That's... It's so scary. I've, I've had a couple times I thought I might have had it just because I had a sore throat or whatever, and I was like, well, I probably don't because yeah. none of those symptoms, but it, it is definitely scary. Mm-hmm. Scary to, you know, to be even thinking that way, and it's just been it's just been nuts. It's been very nuts, yeah. Yeah. I see on your um, IMDb, uh, you recently did an episode of Searching for Josh Brolin in the Apocalypse. get that on my um my instagram uh it just came out that's the other that's the other that's the other zoom thing i, I did that was really fun 
it is also talking about all the just with, within the within the storyline of, of Josh Brolin. It's talking also about the cast, of people I knew from that I know from uh, the nerd. So you know that that was fun and funny, and and um, Julie Phillips again uh, was hysterical, and Jay Depp, who are the like, the hosts of the show. So that was really that was really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's funny. I talked to, I talked about um, Josh Brolin the other day uh, with somebody who was in the first Deadpool movie because he's in the second Deadpool movie, and I thought his character was very unnecessary and very annoying. <laughs> but he. Yeah, I'm not sure who that movie. What's it called? Deadpool, you know, superhero with um, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And how was the movie? Because I like Ryan Reynolds. The first, okay, I love the first one. You know, he's a superhero with raunchy, oh. with raunchy jokes and just over the top camp and everything. It's hilarious. And the second one is too, but there's, it's just, it's not as tight and as good as the first one. You know, and Josh oh. Brolin is yeah. in it, and uh, his character is very unnecessary and annoying. You know, but. It's it's great, and uh, hopefully the third one will be coming out next year or something. Okay, okay, cool. Well, <laughs> um, that's usually the way. It's funny because uh, you were saying um, what were you saying about the you were saying that you know tra- not trashy the word you just used about yourself is like about the movie, and I'm like that that's Tommy. Tommy loves like <laughs> like a oh, raunchy. <laughs> There's a yeah. There's a part in the movie where um, uh, he's he's got this girl who's you know a real badass and she kicks guys' asses and stuff, right? And so she kicks right. she kicks this one guy's ass, and then uh, Deadpool says, "Man, I feel sorry for any guy that pressures her into prom sex." <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. He reminds me of, of Jim Carrey in this movie. Like, Jim Carrey as a superhero. Yeah. That's so funny. You'd like it, yeah. You'd like it. I totally would. Are you, are you worried about the future of 80s in the sand? Definitely. I'm just worried about all that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, I, I assume it'll all come back somehow, but, you know, it's just, that, that's, re- that's a really hard one to um, make sense of as far as um, how would that work, because mm-hmm. it's, it's just totally, it's like a concert, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I, I last year... Last October, I, I talked to Robert Romanus about two hours before he caught his flight to 80s in the Sand. And it was a great conversation, you know, it was a half hour. I think in the last five minutes of it is when he was, like, getting into his car to go to the airport. And he, he, it was great talking to him. He's a great guy. I, and I did not show him my impression of him. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is, he's so much fun. Um, yeah, I mean, we all, that was what my third, second year. My second, I guess it was my second year there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two years. And we were invited down to the fall, but I can't imagine the fall's going to happen. Yeah. It's yeah. too soon. All these, all these conventions, yeah, just being canceled and stuff this year. It's, it's sad. I don't know. It's, it's, it's not a good way to start a new decade, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. No, I, um, I, try not, I try not to think too much about all that stuff because it's, it's, so, it's so, you know, it's so tough. I mean, I just don't know how that will come back. Um, but I, I, I hope it does because I have a lot of fun doing that. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I talked to Diane again, you know, and uh, she was as wonderful as always, you know, and we were talking about, yeah. we were talking about all of this, you know, and stuff. Yeah. She's such a positive person, you know, she really puts things in the perspective. 
Right. Well, what was what were her thoughts? I mean, did she think they will at some point too, or? Yeah. That at some point everybody will will come out of this with good, with with positivity and good things happening, you know. Yeah. Oh, and, and it was so so hard because last year that event was was messed up by that whole you know not only fair but those people that had died and I was kind of blocking out but then from Jakarta several months before like in the spring of that year from whatever they died of, you know. So that kind of put a bad, so the, the turnout wasn't as good, although the, that was just as fun, but the turnout wasn't as good um, because, you know, people had canceled because they were worried for the, the other the other reason, but whatever it was, something in the alcohol, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I, I stopped listening at a certain point. I thought, I'm not going to worry about this. But, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole new, whole new world right now. It's, I mean, wearing a mask is like <laughs> like being from a foreign country, but one where it's a bad, like a bad video where everyone's wearing masks. And when you when you wear a mask, you can't you can't you can't really even smile even under the mask. And if you did, who would who would know? Yeah. <laughs> the communication, you know, the fact that it's just it's just literally only your eyes, and it it, <clears throat> it really feels like there's a missing. Link. I mean, at the beginning, I was super depressed wearing a mask. I've gotten a little bit used to it, but I definitely turn off when I put a mask on. Like, I don't, like, I'm, I'm frustrating because you, you just don't have, you know, just generally, I like to, whatever I'm doing in the world, I like to, you know, kind of just gently communicate with people, like when you're in the store, just without, like, talking necessarily, just, you know. And so that's, that's probably been a hard part of this. Um, pandemic yeah it's it's like a twilight zone episode i feel you know yeah when i go outside and i see everybody in masks it's like a twilight zone episode it's like uh this episode of seinfeld where everyone's eating a candy bar with a fork and knife exactly you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's, cr it's craziness yeah yeah so I think we should play. I think we should play my secret silly game now. Okay, cool. Because we didn't get to play it the last couple of times. <laughs> oh God, I, I think I've lost it out because you're always that's good because I like to be surprised. So, what is it? <laughs> okay. So, I always, I always, I always work, get worried when we get to these parts. You are very raunchy. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't that bad. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. be honest with you. It's. It's silly slumber party questions, and how this works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me the exact same question, and I answer it. Okay. This is just fun. Nobody wins or loses. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Okay, good. Yeah. Julia, are you ticklish? Yes. Tommy, are you ticklish? I am baby ticklish, yes. Baby ticklish? Yeah, like I have a knee-jerk reaction if you tickle me. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's like sweet. I've been known to hit some people in the groin. Huh? <laughs> it's funny, so it's dangerous to tickle you. Mm -hmm, very. It's body it, reaction. It can be, yeah. Um, what's your favorite part of the body? Um, somebody's neck, the back of their neck. That's interesting. I haven't heard that one before. It can be very, you know, flirtatious, very private, very a surprise or sweet or salty or, you know, many <laughs> Salty. <laughs> That's good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite part of the body? I'm, I, I don't even want to ask. <laughs> like all those things you mentioned, all those words you mentioned, this can be the same. Um, the be oh. the belly button. The belly button. Oh my god. Okay. All right. That's pretty. That's a that's a good one. Yeah. You know what I found. Do you know what I found out? What the reason why. 
NBC, NBC censors didn't want uh, Barbara Eden showing her belly button on I Dream a Genie was mm-hmm. because um, they felt that the belly button was a enticement for what she had above and below. Well, um, I don't see much, you know, Bonnie's an enticement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I, that, but, that, but it makes sense, doesn't it? I can't, I don't really, actually, I can't, I couldn't really argue with, with that, except for that I think it's a little bit, like, over the top. Like, yeah. you're, you're dressing her in a, in a, you know, sexy way. Why not? A belly button is not, you know, it's just, Part of your stomach, but of course, on a woman, it's generally, or on a guy, it could be really cute. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right, that's interesting. So, I guess did her, her lower half of her costume come up higher than that? Yeah, so she had to uh, cover it, you know. Yeah, huh. Because to me, when I think of her, I just think of, I, I think of maybe that I. Was seeing her. If I had that money, I would have said yes. Of course, you were seeing her belly button. Like I wouldn't, because she is so was so sexy like that. Like I could just imagine that I did. So I don't know if the network won anything by doing that. But <laughs> but anyway, love that show. Yeah, I reached out to her. Her uh, personal assistant uh, turned me down. So sadly, right. Um, okay. What color are your toenails painted? Toenails are natural right now. Natural. Natural. <laughs> uh, what what color are your toenails? They are natural, and <laughs> I think uh, let's see. When I saw you last year, I had I remember I had blue green because it was an Easter color, right? And then what? the second time I went to LA last September, they were purple with sparkles. Yes. I mean, I, mine normally, look, I mean, I go through different things. Somewhere I just do like a very pretty kind of natural light pink. And then, but on my toes, I usually do more. It's just, when we got into this, um, you know, thing, I just went, you know what, there's no point. I'm going to be unhappy with my nails. If, as soon as they start getting like messed up, I, I want to get them redone. And I don't do them as well as you know, a manicurist or a pedicurist. So I just decided to start to go au natural. <laughs> <laughs> Very few people yeah. can can do them, you know, and make them look professional, you know. I, <coughs> yeah, I, I don't think I'm that good at it. I mean, I'm, I'm really good when I do my left hand, but since I'm a right, since I'm not right hand, but I'm just not as good and it's not that fun. And so anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say is uh, your best personality trait? <clears throat> um, probably that I, I like to have fun in life, like kind of like a exuberance, you know, I like to laugh and have fun. People, people seem to like my laugh. I, I, so and, I'm one of them, and I agree with you. Uh, thank you. What, yeah. What's your best character personality trait? Um, my sense of empathy and the fact that I have no filter. You don't. You do not have a filter. That's true. You <laughs> always are surprising us. That's great, though. Mm-hmm. It's I, great as an interviewer. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And now here comes my favorite question. Okay. Is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Um, well, it makes me feel sad to say, but yeah, we, we happened to be walking on the road, and there was a dead, there was a dead animal the other day. Oh yeah, our, on our beautiful canyon road. So the smell of a dead animal, not so good. What about you? What's the stinky smell that drives you um, in a not good way? Okay, so whenever I mention this to, to people who have kids, it doesn't affect them one way or another. Farts and feet. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, farts, of course, but feet, I mean, yeah, they have to be washed. <laughs> they have to be washed. 
Yes. Now I, I like feet, but when they're clean, they have to be they have to be clean. That's when I like them the most. And even if you don't love them, is that what I'm getting? Exactly. Exactly. And when I, I was talking to um, this great acting uh, teacher and character actress, uh, Kate McGregor Stewart, and I. Uh, I, oh, I know her from way, way, way. Oh my god. Yeah, you know Kate? Oh god, she's so much fun. <laughs> Where is she right now? She's in LA and she teaches. She I I'm trying to remember how I met her. I think she might have known Judith Light, maybe. I it was during Sigma for days, I think. And then when mm-hmm. I left the show, I studied a little bit with her. Like I worked on like a Shakespeare monologue from Romeo and Juliet, and I don't even know what else I worked on with her. I really liked her. Yeah, she uh, she was in New York yeah. for a long, long time, and then she came to L.A., you know, and she's been teaching um, Marissa Tomei for like 36 years. And she wow. she's like, you know, Marissa is her favorite student. She talks about her all the time. You know, she mentioned her in her Academy Award acceptance speech, you know. And so I told her, you know, that uh, that Farts and Feet uh, was what I didn't like. And she said, that that should be the name of your memoir, Farts and Feet. <laughs> She's so funny. That's great. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, though. I don't think I'll name my memoir that, but I'll definitely put that quote in the back of the book. Right. Exactly. Oh, my God. Katie McGregor's good. I'm writing her name down. I, I can't believe... She's she's on my Facebook page, so. Okay, I'm going to. And is she is she still married? Did, did you guys even talk about that? I she she might be. I don't know. Who knows? Wow, that really wow. The fact that you just said her name is crazy. One wonderful lady. Yeah, I I love her a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So I promised you. That you know, I would that I wouldn't end the show with with the shock value surprise, you know, but I do have to give you some of my trademark no filter. Okay. I was listening to uh, the the last one we did, you know, and I had brought up to you about how I had given up sex and masturbation for Lent last year. <laughs> well, I did it again this year, and I'm not doing it ever again because. Within two weeks, quarantine started, and it was a very lonely time. Yeah. Very lonely. All I did during that time was podcast like crazy and smoke a lot of weed until I ran out. That's all I did. So I'm never doing it again. And right. It's a national disaster. It just has to, you'll have to continue with it. That's, that's horrible that's like like uh deep and dark it's like like why should you be punished <laughs> like trying to give up something for less exactly and oh and um yeah and um i've been having guests come on all month because uh and it's um it's it's international masturbation month and today is international oh. masturbation day and they've been telling me their own personal stories you know and I know you don't have any. I know you don't. <laughs> I'm not telling any of my those stories. <laughs> yeah, the the, oh, the closest the closest you have is that that scene that got cut out of Revenge of the Nerds where Betty had the dildo. Oh, you mean the banana? Oh, I yeah. or the banana? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what. That's exactly why I didn't do it. No, it didn't get cut out. We mm-hmm. never shot it. Yeah. I would say it would be on the very bottom of the of the um, what's wrong with me on the uh, call sheet. Like it would be listed, the very bottom, like the last thing. And I said to Jeff, you know, Jeff, like I, I really don't want to do that scene. Like you know, I I was game for you know pretty much everything. Uh, and and I think he couldn't say he could be he couldn't be that that scene. Or seen at that little thing was going to be officially cut, but we never shot it. And I was because I thought, you know what? I just don't think we need to see Betty going down on a banana. Of course, she's going to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, she's going 
to win the contest. But, but we don't need to see that. I don't want to do it. And, you know, it was funny because he never, I don't think he ever, he never directly answered me. I just kept telling him. Because, you know, I didn't, I wasn't difficult to work with in any way, any way, shape, or form. I'm, 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 of course I'm, not. Oh, and, you know, but I just, yeah, I just did not want to do that. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, not to say that I might not have my own stories, Tommy, but <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you have got to watch um, the, um, the Josh Brolin thing. Um, I will. And Julie, it's, 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 if you if you Instagram searching for Josh Brolin, uh, it's episode number nine. I think they're on ten now, or maybe eleven, but it's nine. And I've got to get it to my. Um, I'm just so I, I'm not. I'm getting tiny bit better, but not that much better at all. My social media pages, so mm-hmm. I, I need to get it. I have an Instagram called uh, the Real Betty Child. The Real Betty Child. I need to get it on there because it's perfect for that. Um, so if you can do this for me, great. You go to it. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll check it out. Yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> and then my my friend Julie Julie, who did the Josh Brolin show, is who I just shot the. Um, she's who I just shot uh, the. Um, the other uh, the short film with, which is called uh, Wrong Number. And I mm-hmm. posted something about it. Well, now, this is how, this is how ignorant I am about it. So when, if you were to go to Searching for Josh Brooklyn on Instagram, you could follow it, right? Or, or you have to be approved by her to follow it. Like, how does that work? Because I'll, I'll ask, like, if you don't have to be friends with her to, for, her, for you to follow her Instagram. Mm-hmm. And that's just, you do? Uh, oh, on Instagram. Oh, you can, fo- yeah, you can follow them, yeah, but, but there's no friend thing on there. <coughs> you can follow them. You can go. You can go to that yourself, even though you don't know her. Yeah. And follow. Okay, good. So it's on there, and I needed to get on my real, the real Betty, the real Betty Child page, as well as whatever else. Because it's cute. It's cute and it's fun, and so it's the COVID thing, and we were all on Zoom, and, and it's fun. It's playful. It's actually, Searching for Josh, Josh Rowland is a really fun little concept that she came up with for, you know, Searching for Josh Rowland. Because apparently, if you if you watch the first episode, they'll give you a flavor of the show. You know, and they're each one just a couple minutes. Like, it's fun. I, I really, she's very creative. She's, she's just, she's a blast to work with. And Jacob, Jacob uh, I think it's Seidman. He was a doll. Mm-hmm. That I to be a so yeah, please watch that. And if you, you can go into my page. <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> that would be great. Her, her, her name's Julie what? Julie Philippine. Okay. That's her name. And then, but I think, I think, I guess I'd have to go to it on my, it's like searching for Josh Rowland. Let me, let me see, let me see. Do we have time for me to see? Should I text Go ahead. Me? Yeah, no, go right ahead. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see. Julie Philip, yeah. So Julie with an E, and then Philip C H I L L I T S T E I N. And I see they're on episode. There's something going on right now. That that is definitely Josh Brolin's show because the two of them interviewing. Yeah, it's really fun. Really fun. I think it's really fun. And um, anyway. So and then and then um, yeah, I can send you when I get a copy of it if you feel like it. The uh, the, the the thing we just finished, like literally, they they just sent me like a I think what might be a final copy of this other short movie we did, which is also COVID related. Like we're both it's like it's like me stuck on a boat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am being playing. I'm playing a character. And it's my girlfriend Julie playing someone who's trapped in her house because of COVID, and her, and of course with her children, and you know, going crazy. And anyway, so it's just it's playful and funny and a little it's pretty dark comedy. Yeah, <laughs> trying to trying tr- tr- try to reference up the creek being stuck on a boat. <laughs> exactly. Oh God, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I actually that was the best part about the creek was learning river rafting and. It was gorgeous. It was so, and and the people, just the people. But the movie itself was, yeah, pretty silly, like like you know. But but fun. We had a blast, you know. Mm-hmm. 
absolutely. I was, oh, I was curious. I was curious. Um, how do you feel that uh, this year you're going to be hitting a milestone birthday? Tommy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just curious. I like I'm not going to mention numbers. Um they can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I no, I mean everyone will be in a millisecond. But no, no, I mean like like at my fiftieth birthday I had a fiftieth birthday party and my sister said to me something that later in retrospect I thought you're right. She's like, you know, you shouldn't have like a fiftieth birthday party because that's a lot of work and and blah, 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 and you should just, like, uh, like take, you know, a trip or, like, a weekend and do, like, a, you know, a really extravagant, like, spa, some, you know, like, what, use whatever that money that you do throwing the party. The party was really fun, but the closer I got to the party, the less I wanted to, to be, like, 50 to be, like, the subject of, <laughs> and so now... It's a milestone birthday. Hmm, what's after 50? Uh, so now I'm like, there's just no way I'm 50. <laughs> there's just no way. I don't accept it, Tommy. I do not accept it. Uh, I don't so, accept it either, because to me, uh, you're you're young and beautiful. You always will be. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, I'm kind of not accepting the number. I'll accept the birthday. And, and luckily <laughs> for me, I was born on July 2nd, so... I always consider, and I hope, that there will be fireworks. I'm sure there will, will be, um, even if we're not allowed to all gather and crowd. But, <laughs> but I love the Fourth of July fireworks. And, um, me too. Again, they're like an extension of, you know, it's, not that they're for me, but like it's just part of my birthday because I so, so love seeing fireworks. So anyway, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so I'm feeling, I feel like positive about the birthday, more quiet about the number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah that's all i wanted to know you know i wasn't gonna like you know uh sh- shed some light on that or anything you know i was just curious yeah. but um sure. n- next saturday not this saturday coming up but the next saturday is my birthday and oh, i'll be uh, 37 and i'm already going through a midlife crisis <laughs> what how old are you 37 started way before that um okay. it's just you know because you know it took me a long time to figure out what i wanted to do in my life and stuff and with a combination of that and covid i have to say just my future looks uncertain you know and i want to accomplish a lot you know by the time i'm 40 so i don't have to struggle anymore you know yeah yeah exactly <sighs> i hear that sure yeah Games or Knowing, knowing that your the direction that you're going is the right direction, or will get you, you know, like all of that, all of that. Yeah. But of course, no matter where, in some ways, that's always going to be for people that are growing. Like in some way, we're all going to always going to be challenged by something. But it's not, it's not easy. Life is not always, you know. It's not always like just so great, you know. It's sometimes it's it's you're wondering what course am I on? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what did I choose? <laughs> you know. What planet am I on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the heck? But then, like I don't know. Then something. Then it then suddenly it changes when you just think, you know, it couldn't get any worse or whatever. Like then suddenly it starts to have an upswing again. You're like, okay, God, I made it through that. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I love to go out to dinner, you know, for my birthday and, and stuff yeah. like that, but probably just going to order pizza this year. Yeah, I know. We're not, we're not, um, I don't know when restaurants are going to open, but even if, they, when they do, I don't know, maybe, I don't think I'll be the first one out, which I, you know, getting takeout is, is, is fun. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see when we get to that moment when things are, I mean, in some places they are. I'm 
my sister was in Texas, and she said they went out to dinner, and it was like every other table or something like that. But I don't know. Like after going through all this, it's almost, it's almost like you you have PS. What is it? P- PTSD. Post traumatic stress. Yeah. Yeah, post traumatic stress syndrome out of just gone through. Like we at first, it was such a it was such a shock. It, to be have to stay inside and think about all these germs and, and worry about yourself or if you had it or then it is, then learn that we could be, we could have it and not even know it basically as as well as all the other variations and then be getting other people sick without knowing it and oh my god and then we finally get through that a little bit like after a month you you know like my bravado for being mad and stuff like it's like all right I have to accept it obviously there's nothing. I'm not going to be able to change this along. But then now things are reopening. It's sort of like, okay, you know, kind of gives you a feeling of, is it safe? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So well, let it be a very, very great pizza if you order one. And uh, yeah. and, and happy birthday. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah, I've, you know, I mean, with, with all this crap that's going on, I just can't believe though how blessed i am you know and yeah i'm you know i'll be coming up you know hopefully end of this year maybe beginning of next year i'll be coming up on a thousand episodes of the podcast you know yeah and i I made the decision back in december that in 2020 i was going to be more taboo than i've ever been before because i'm meeting so many great uh, guests who are free spirits like I am and stuff, you know, and they just love talking to me and they, and I, I, I love making them laugh, you know? Totally. Totally. You know? It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. A thousand. That's really neat. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah have, have you ever worked with Eric Roberts? No, uh, I was on the set once, only because my boyfriend was an assistant director. Um, so I did. It was like a boxing movie. I can't remember the name of it right now. But uh, best of the best. Yeah. I don't remember the title. Maybe it was back in the late eighties. Yeah, it was. It was probably best of the best. It was a kickboxing movie. Mhm. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Well, I I interviewed Eric Roberts' wife. Um, she was in Animal House with Tim Matheson. She worked with him in it. And um, she gave me the greatest compliment to my mother at a convention we went to a few months ago. She said, he, he she said, um, I was talking to somebody and they, the two of them were talking. She said, he, he talks so respectfully to women, yet he tells them sex stories and dirty jokes. And for that, he's a gem in my book. That was the greatest compliment ever. Yes. Oh, God. That's so wonderful. Yeah. That's so cute. That's so cute. He's such, he's such a character. I such a talented actor as well. Eric Roberts, well, yeah. Yeah, Eric Roberts. He's he's wonderfully eccentric. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I got a joke for you that I wrote. Oh, God, this is so wrong. And just for the record, I don't have a sister. How how do you fuck your sister in a moral way? Uh, I don't know. How? Finger banger and look away. What? What was that answer? What? Finger banger and look away. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. I tried. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, God, that is so great. Um, yeah, yeah, no. I, I'm never good at those last raunchy jokes. I'm never good at that. But you, you, you always do them anyway. That's just so you. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> so incorrigible. I, I always have one ready to go. Everywhere I go, yes. <laughs> oh, wow, that's funny. Yeah. Yes. 
So, Julia, thank you so much for being such a great friend and coming back on again. Oh, no problem. No problem. And um, I wanted to remind you um, about the plug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what do I do? Um, wait, that's in your text to me, isn't it? Yeah, to um, go on, uh, you know, Facebook and, uh, okay. you, like, you're going to send me a message, you know, on your phone. And there's a microphone icon next to the word box that you can record it on and send it. Okay, so I so the, I get the microphone and then I record what you wanted me to say and then I just hit send and send it in Messenger to you or send it... Send it in Messenger there, yeah. Send it in Messenger to you, not to your page or just Messenger and then you, yeah, it, you move it. it yeah, it's going to go... It, yeah, after it's recorded... Uh, yeah, you press it, ascend, and it goes right to uh, my messenger. It'll come in my inbox. Okay, so in other words, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I have this right. So when I do this on Facebook, I record it with the mic, and then I hit send, it'll go to your messenger. Not There's no choice, but I'll mess up. There, there's, there's no, uh, the only thing you might mess up is you may, you may need to do more takes of the plug. A lot of people do that. You, you can do that as much, as much as you want. So, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. A, a, a lot 